Blanca. Tessie. Good evening, everyone. Let me go ahead and call the meeting to order. It is 6.04 p.m. I'm going now to ask our board of, of our, our board to introduce themselves, not introduce themselves, call roll. So as I go from my right to my left, if you can just state that you're here, let's see if we have a quorum. Jessica, Jessica Ochoa, present. Carlos Margo, present. Anita Chavez, present. Alisa Peña, present. Rosalba Hernandez, present. Celso Gomez Jr., present. Good, everyone's present. We have a quorum tonight. If I could ask everyone to stand and let's go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Please face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. We'll now go ahead and proceed to our recognitions for tonight. If I can ask uh, our board members, Celso Gomez Jr. and Jessica Ochoa to make themselves in front of the mm -hmm. dais for the pictures. Blanca, if you could go ahead and uh, recognize those that are going to be recognized tonight. Good evening, everyone. My name is Blanca Ganto. I'm the Public Relations and Communications Coordinator for La Jolla <laughs> ISD. And we have our recognition section for today, which I will be facilitating. Our first recognition is recognition of the La Jolla Independent School District bus driver who competed at the Regional Bus Safety Rodeo. And this will be presented by Mr. Jose T. Garcia. Good evening, Mr. President Alvarez, Dr. Sorensen, members of the board. Tonight we are recognizing Mr. Rodolfo Cerda for earning a first place at, and becoming a finalist at the convention division at the 2324 uh, South Texas Regional Rodeo, right? That's what it's called, the Rodeo. So Mr. Uh, Cerda will be traveling on May 3rd and 4th to Mesquite, Texas. <laughs> to the state competition. Uh, and again, just to give you a little background, uh, they take a written exam and also they do some like driving obstacle courses and safety measures to ensure. So thank you, Mr. Uh, Cerda, for representing La Jolla ISD in such a great, great honor that you're in first place. Our next recognition is recognition of graduation specialist, Ms. Claudia Gonzalez, by the National Association of Social Workers of Texas, LRGV, presented by this award will be Ms. Giovanna Hernandez. Good evening, uh, President Alvarez, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Marcy Sorensen, and esteemed board members, administration, and community joining us today. My name is Giovanna Hernandez, and I serve as the Graduation and Student Recovery Director with Student Services. Tonight, we gather with appreciation and honor to, to honor Ms. Claudia Gonzalez, Graduation Specialist at La Jolla High School. Ms. Gonzalez has been recognized as a deserving recipient of the Social Worker of the Year Award granted by the National Association of Social Workers. Ms. Gonzalez's commitment to our students, unwavering support and outstanding leadership have earned widespread recognition and admiration both within our district and beyond. Therefore, th excuse me, throughout her tenure, she has consistently demonstrated a profound commitment 
to advocating for the well-being and success of every student under her care. Her tireless efforts and compassionate approach have, less, have left a lasting impact in the lives of the students and families of La Jolla ISD. Please join me in celebrating Ms. Gonzalez's exceptional achievements and expressing our heartfelt gratitude for her invaluable contributions. Thank you. Our next recognition is recognition of La Jolla ISD high school students that advanced and placed in the 64th annual Rio Grande Valley Regional Science Fair and students that advanced to the Texas Science and Engineering Fair at the Texas A&M College Station. This award will be presented by Mr. Pablo de Leon. Good evening, Mr. Board President, Madam Superintendent, esteemed members of the board, cherished members of our beloved La Jolla ISD community, and of course our proud parents and most importantly, our future Einsteins and Curies. Tonight I'm thrilled to stand before you as an advocate for science education as we celebrate the exceptional achievements of our remarkable students. La Jolla ISD is a true gem in the Rio Grande Valley and has been nurturing young minds and fostering a culture of scientific inquiry and innovation by supporting K-12 science fair students for over two decades. We're not just participating in science fairs, we're cultivating the next generation of STEM leaders, innovators, and science leaders who will have an impact on our community and society. Each year, more than 20,000 bright, aspiring young scientists across our great state of Texas participate in local and regional science fairs, and only a handful earn that prestigious right to advance to the state level. This year, 14 of our high school students shone brightly enough to make that illustrious leap. Yes, at La Jolla ISD, we're not just producing science students, we're producing science state contenders. These students are truly special as they go above and beyond by challenging themselves in advanced AP and dual enrollment science courses throughout the day. Even with their packed course schedules, they still manage to dazzle us with their science ingenuity. Thanks to our district's administration and school board's unwavering support and the innovative concept of Science Saturdays, yes, our students come in early in the morning on a Saturday instead of sleeping late and do science. So that these are our great young Einsteins that have been able to dive deep in their research guided by mentors who are passionate um, about their science as they are. But let's not forget behind every great student is a great support network from the success we celebrate today is a great is a group effort. The unwavering dedication of our supporting parents, principals, and teachers, all working together to support our students together uh, for their scientific and engineering dreams and goals. So without further ado, let's celebrate these outstanding high school students, our future scientists who make La Jolla ISD a stellar place for scientific discovery and achievement. Let's give them a round of applause. From the Academy of Health Science Profession STEM, led by our principal Leanne Herrera and assistant principal Deborah Zamora, we have Charlene Alfaro. Alondra Arjona. Anaí Bernal. Melanie Cantu. Jocelyn Garcia, Eleni Garcia, Jacqueline Garcia Gonzalez, Beyonce Lopez, Patricia Rocha, 
Julieta Salinas. Enrique Solis. And Jenna Zamora. Our teachers from AHSB have spent countless hours working with our students. I want to sincerely thank Mr. Emilio Enojosa for always being there for our students and leading the charge on Science Saturdays. From Delma Salinas STEM Early College High School, led by Principal Mr. Victor Rodriguez and Assistant Principal Elizabeth Villarreal, we have Daniela Barrera. Haley Cantu, Mariana Garza, Debony Hernandez, Carter Ponce, Edward Reina, Naila Rodriguez, Skyler Rodriguez, Alvaro Torres and Pedro Vargas. I also want to thank our teachers, Ms. Sonia Luna and Marlene Montes, for spearheading the student initiative at Telma Salinas. And again, ladies and gentlemen, the future is bright at La Jolla SD, thanks to these future scientists. Smile over here. Three, two, one. One more. Congratulations. Our next recognitions will be from the Fine Arts Department and will be led by Mr. Ruben Adame. Let's begin with our recognition of La Jolla High School Choir for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweepstakes Award. Good evening, President Alvarez, members of the school board, Dr. Sorensen, central office administrators and community members in attendance. It's my sincere privilege to stand before you tonight to recognize several of our fine arts programs and their directors and students for achievement and accomplishments. It is important to note that all the successes we are recognizing tonight are not possible without the commitment and support of our awesome fine arts teachers, campus administrators, central office administration, parents of these outstanding students, our superintendent, Dr. Sorensen, and the members of the school board. These types of successes take a village of supporters to make this a reality. Most importantly, the individual and group successes you will see tonight are for sure not possible without the commitment and hard work of these outstanding students. We are here tonight to celebrate these organizations and students for all they have accomplished. The first group we are recognizing is the La Jolla High School Tanner Bass Choir and the La Jolla High School Mix Choir for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweepstakes Award for their concert and sight reading performances at the UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation. <laughs> Members of the La Jolla High School Choir Program would like to extend their gratitude and appreciation to their principal, Mr. Ricardo Estrada, and the faculty at La Jolla High School for their unwavering support. Students representing the La Jolla High School choirs are Brisa Adame, Evan Alvarez, Audrey Brown, Dante Ramos, Emily Gomez, Yosgard Ortega, Destiny Ramirez, Maite Rios, Emmanuel Rosales, Alberto Trevino, Ixaya Zamora, and Rodrigo Aguirre. 
Director for the La Jolla High School Choir is Ms. Leo Stephanie Valencia Herrera, and Principal at La Jolla High School is Mr. Ricardo Estrada. Congratulations. How about one more big round of applause for these wonderful students? <laughs> Next, we would like to recognize the La Jolla High School Gillette Dr Drill Team for their, for their being named the 2024 Showtime International Grand Champions. At the this happened at the Showtime Nationals competition in Galveston, Texas. The Gillettes won the medium team Grand National Championship titles in the POM, Hip Hop, and Contemporary categories, securing their medium team Grand Championship title. The Gillette officers... The Juliet officers were equally as successful winning Grand National Championship titles in Medium Officer Palm, Jazz, and Lyrical, along with the Medium Officer Grand Championship title. Lastly, receiving choreography and Supreme Awards for multiple routines, along with championship rings, further highlights the Juliet's remarkable performance and creativity throughout the season. And the trophies show it, if that doesn't mean anything. Congratulations once again to the Juliets for an impressive season filled with well-deserved accolades and successes. Representing the La Jolla High School Juliets are Janaka Martinez, Caitlin Peña, Paola Fernandez, Mia Sandoval, and Brianna Morales. <laughs> Directors are Everest Guerra and Liliana Salgado, and principal is Mr. Ricardo Estrada. Congratulations. How about a big round of applause for our national grand champion? Next, we would like to recognize the Palmview High School Treble Choir for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweepstakes Award for their concert and sight reading performances at the UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation. The Palmview High School Choir participated in the UIL Conscience Site Reading Evaluation on March 26 and came away with all Division I ratings from all six judges. A huge and proud congratulations to all these young vocal artists for their dedication and outstanding performance at this competition. Students representing the Palmview High School Women's Choir are Hope Cortez, Jocelyn Lopez, Danica Sainz, Vitali Gonzalez, Natalie Castaneda, Megan Guerra, and Celeste Vidauri. Director of the PHS Women's Choir is Esperanza Medina, and principal is Mr. Lionel Perez. Congratulations, ladies. Next, we would like to recognize the Palmview High School Onyx Dance Team for being named the 2024 HTE Dance National Champions in their division. The Onyx Dance Performance Team at Palmview High School is an extension of the varsity dance programs. It offers students a diverse range of dance genres to prepare them for careers in the industry the Onyx Dance Performance Team at Palmview High School acts as a bridge to collegiate dance, providing students with essential skills and experiences. 
Through rigorous training and performance opportunities, it aims to empower students to pursue their passion for dance professionally. Students representing the PHS Onyx dance team are Emily Pena and Stephanie Luna. And I think the Rubies are up there as well. Is that correct? Miss Annie, where's Miss Annie? Is the, are the Rubies up there also? Are the Rubies up here too? Okay, so I'm gonna read that recognition too. Oh, they're all right there, okay. Uh, director of the Onyx dance team is Ana Hernandez and principal is Mr. Leonel Perez. How about a big round of, of applause for our Onyx dance team. Congratulations. Now we're going to recognize the Palmview High School Rubies Drill Team for being named the 2024 HTE Dance National Champions in the Team Kick Division, the Team Hip Hop Division, and the Social Officer Ensemble Division. The, the Rubies. The Rubies are a group of dedicated young dancers who work hard on a daily basis to strive for success. This year serves as a shining example of what can be achieved through hard work, dedication, and relentless pursuit of excellence. As they reflect on their achievements, they're reminded of the power of unity and collaboration. Together, they have proven that anything is possible when individuals work together towards a common goal with determination and perseverance. Representing the PHS Ruby drill teams are the officers, Major Andrea Cantu, Captain Ruby Rivas, Co-Captain Stephanie Lina, Lieutenant Isabella Ramirez, Sergeant Roseli Rivas, and Ruby Social Officers, President Alexia Verreal, Vice President Karim Martinez, Secretary Mareli Berrones, Historian Estrella Cerda, and Treasurer Doris Valencia. Director for the Palmview High School Rubies is Mrs. Ana Hernandez, and Principal is Mr. Leonel Perez. Congratulations, ladies. Next, we would like to recognize the Cesar Chavez Middle School Symphonic Band for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweepstakes Award for their concert and sight reading performances at the UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation. The Cesar Chavez Middle School Band has earned various accolades throughout the years. They have continued the tradition of success this year by earning this prestigious UIL Sweepstakes Award. Students representing the Cesar Chavez Middle School Band are Eva Arispe, Lynette Carrillo, Diego Cuadros, Axel Garcia, Oscar Garcia, Cesar Gonzalez, Justin Gonzalez, Daniel Mesa, and Giovanni Vera. The band is under the direction of Mrs. Dina Garcia, assisted by Ms. Flordelisa Benitez. The Cesar Chavez Middle School Band would like to thank their principal, Mr. Ciro Gonzalez, and the rest of the Chavez faculty and staff for their unwavering support. Congratulations. Next, we would like to recognize the Cesar Chavez Middle School Treble Choir for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweepstakes Award for their concert and sight reading performances at the UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation. The Chavez Middle School Treble Choir performed exceptionally at the 2024 UIL contest, achieving superior sweepstakes ratings by all judges. 
Their directors, Sofia L. Martinez and Arturo Rodriguez, are immensely proud of their students' accomplishments thus far and look forward with great anticipation to the achievements they will undoubtedly attain in the years to come. Students representing the Cesar Chavez Middle School Trouble Choir are Elizabeth Flores, Adrina Garza, Vicente Garza, Sofia Munoz, Ana Victoria Rodriguez, Kaylee Rojas, Jenica Solis, Emma Vargas, Areya Vasquez, and Clarissa Vasquez. Again, directors are Sofia L. Martinez and Arturo Rodriguez, and principal at Chavez Middle School is Mr. Ciro Gonzalez. Congratulations. Nice job. Congratulations, ladies. Next, we would like to recognize the Lorenzo de Zavala Middle School Symphonic Band for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweep Six Award for their concert and sight reading performance at the UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation. The Lorenzo de Zavala Middle School Band received Division I ratings from all six judges, giving them this prestigious award. Band directors and students would like to extend their gratitude to their principal, Dr. Sylvia Elizondo, and the faculty at Lorenzo de Zavala for their unwavering support. Students representing the Lorenzo de Zavala Middle School Symphonic Band are Artemio Garza, Rodolfo Sanchez, Raul Hernandez, Luis Ramos, Leia Guerrero, Genesis Mesa, Yumale Andrade, Ilex Gonzalez, Jose Bustios, and Ryan Flores. <laughs> Directors for the Lorenzo de Zavala Band are Diana Camposano and Nancy Colunga, and principal is Dr. Sylvia Elizondo. Congratulations. 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 Nice job. So this next recognition is a special recognition. We're going to recognize all of the Garcia Middle School Fine Arts programs this uh, all together. This was the only middle school in the entire district of La Jolla ISD where all music groups at the middle school received the UIL Sweepstakes Award. How about a big round of applause to Garcia Middle School. So first we'd like to recognize the Garcia Middle School Band for receiving the Sweepstakes Award at this contest. The Irene Garcia Middle School Band Choir and Orchestra Directors would like to thank and extend their gratitude to their principal, Ms. Melissa Artiaga, and the faculty at Irene Garcia Middle School for their unwavering support. Students representing the band are Jose Lagos, Giselle Perez, Fernanda Legoreta, Tatiana Izaguirre, Agil Rodriguez, David Mendiola, Gerardo Salazar, Sebastian Saldana, Joaquin Peña, and Jordan Garza. Band directors are Jorge Peña and Nicole Garcia. And principal is Ms. Melissa Artiaga. Congratulations. Congratulations. Students representing the Irene Garcia yeah. Middle School yeah. Trouble Choir are Mareli Garcia, Mona Lisa Garza, Ivan Gomez, Angela Jimenez, Nelly Marin, Valentina Murillo, Stephanie Orozco, Chorus Rocha, Jaylene Rosales, Allison Salcedo and Sofia Teo.
The choir director is Raquel Garza, and principal is Ms. Melissa Arteaga. Congratulations. <laughs> Students representing the Irene Garcia Middle School Orchestra are Roosevelt Leos, Kendra Morin, Genavi Ponce, Eileen Quintanilla, Emma Rios, Gabriel Rodriguez Castillo, Kayla Bruce, and Elier Zamora. Directors are Ms. Misael Luna and Daniela Vento, and principal is Ms. Melissa Arteaga. Oh, Ms. Vento's here. I, I just want to mention with this particular group, there was a special circumstance. Ms. Vento just gave birth to a baby. And so she was out on FMLA and Mr. Uh, Luna from uh, Palmview High School stepped in to assist and take these students to the contest. So a round of applause to these two for collaborating with each other and creating this opportunity for these students. And not to mention, Ms. Arteaga, um, Irene Garcia made a, queen, a clean sweep with UIL because they were also named the district UIL one-act play champions, which they will be recognized later on. But congratulations, Ms. Arteaga. Nice. Oh. Next, we would like to recognize the Ann Richards Middle School Symphonic Band for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweepstakes Award for their concert and sight reading performances at the UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation. The Ann Richards Middle School Band received Division I ratings from all six judges giving them this prestigious 2024 UIL Award. Band directors and students would like to extend their gratitude to their principal, Mr. Tomas Ocaña, and the faculty at Ann Richards Middle School for their unwavering support. Students representing the Ann Richards Middle School Symphonic Band are Ariel Beltran, Delilah Bernal, Clarissa Castillo, Damian Garcia, Alondra Gonzalez, Eximena Pineda, Rosemary Polanco, Giselle Reyes, Angel Reina, and Santos Tierra Negra. Band directors are Oscar Santiago and Oscar Garcia. And principal is Mr. Tomas Ocaña. Congratulations. And next, we would like to recognize the Memorial Middle School Junior Rubies Dance Team for being named for being named the 2024 Showtime International Dance Competition Middle School Division National Grand Champions. The Junior Rubies placed first place with their Team Jazz, their Team Kick, Team Palm Routines, proudly earning their title of National Grand Champions, while also winning the Supreme Award with their Kick Routine. 
The girls proudly represented La Jolla ISD and Memorial Middle School, where they showed that hard work, discipline, and dedication pays off. The Junior Rubies are grateful for the opportunity to be able to compete at the national level with the support of La Jolla ISD, administrators, teachers, and staff, and of course, their wonderful parents with their unwavering support. Students representing the Memorial Middle School Junior Rubies are Eva Alfaro, Aileen Archaiga, Sofia Benavides, Madeline Farias, Kara Flores, Natalia Flores, Arlene Garcia, Alexia Garabey, Analia Gonzalez, Valentina Gonzalez, Nayeli Guajardo, Lea Gutierrez, Sofia Hernandez, Leilani Lopez, Jimena Lopez, Monse Martinez, Desiree Ochoa, Lea Peña, Madai Rodriguez, Victoria Romero, Jimena Salinas, Victoria Soto, Debanaí De Verial, and Michaela Ramirez. The director of the Memorial Middle School Junior Rubies is Annalisa Gomez, and principal is Mr. Daniel Verial. Congratulations, ladies. Good job. Way to go, ladies. Way to go. Next, we would like to recognize the J.G. Salinas Middle School Symphonic Band for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweep Six Award for their concert and Saturday performance at the UIL concert and Saturday evaluation. The J.G. Salinas Middle School Band received Division I ratings from all six judges, giving them the prestigious 2024 UIL Sweep Six Award. Band directors and students would like to extend their gratitude to their principal, Ms. Nidia Ortiz, and the faculty at J.D. Salinas Middle School for their unwavering support. Students representing the J.D. Salinas Middle School Symphonic Band are Jorge Izaguirre, Cassandra Perez, Victoria Paz, Brianna Cruz, Francisco Acosta, Dylan Alvear, Aiko Rodriguez, Evan Compian, Michael Flores, Leslie Rodriguez, Jaime Roman, and Steven Bonilla. Band directors are Jose Verreal and Isaac Vasquez, and principal is Ms. Nidia Ortiz. Congratulations. Congratulations, ma'am. Congratulations. Lastly, we would like to recognize the Domingo Trevino Middle School Symphonic Band for receiving the 2024 UIL Sweep Six Award for their concert and sight reading performances at the UIL Concert and Sight Reading Evaluation. The Domingo Trevino Middle School Band received Division I ratings from all six judges, giving them the prestigious 2024 UIL Sweep Six Award. Band directors and students would like to extend their gratitude to their principal, Ms. Annette Lozano, and the faculty at Domingo Trevino Middle School for their unwavering support. Students representing the Domingo Trevino Middle School Symphonic Band are Areli Marroquin, Milagro Science, Francisco Lopez, Ivan Tijerina, Alvaro Garza, Abraham Lopez, Kevin Camarillo, Daniel Rosales, Daniel Trejo, Randy Hernandez, Jose Castellon, and Isabella Ibarra. Yeah. 
Band directors are Josh Martinez and Jesus Olivares. And principal is Miss Annette Lozano. Ladies and gentlemen, how about, how about one more big round of applause for all our fine arts recognitions tonight. Our next recognition is recognition of La Jolla ISD UIL Academics Elementary District Champions, and this award will be presented by Mr. Abel Zamora. Good evening. Um, thank you, Dr. Sorensen, board members, assistant superintendents, for allowing me the opportunity to recognize our outstanding UIL academic students and for your continued support of our UIL academic programs. A special thank you to the parents, students, and staff members that are here with us or following along via social media. First up, we have from Chapa Elementary in fourth grade art district champion, Avery Gutierrez. Thank you. Next, from Garza Elementary in third grade ready writing, Caitlin Cavazos. Thank you. Next up from Cavazos Elementary in third grade spelling, Genesis Vallavardes. And um, in fifth grade music memory, Salome Luna. Salome, Salome Luna. Thank you. Next up from Seguin Elementary in third grade listening skills, Yaisa Blunt. Thank you. Next up from Benson Elementary in third grade calculator, Abraham Lazaro. He's not with us. Next, next we've got Fourth grade Spanish poetry, Romina Garza. Um, in in fourth in uh, fifth grade math class and charts, Carolina Cespedes. Fifth grade dictionary skills, Christian Estrada. Fifth grade mathematics, Leonardo Gutierrez. Fifth grade spelling, Nyla Gomez, Benson Elementary. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next up, we've got Camarena Elementary. In second grade, Spanish Creative Writing, Abigail de la Cruz. Second grade spelling, Leila Larangua. In fourth grade science, uh, and in fourth grade spelling, Ali Perez. Fourth grade chess, we've got Eduardo Garcia. Um, in fifth grade calculator, Ariane Garcia. Next up, from Clinton Elementary, second grade chess, Levy Mendes. In fourth, in fourth grade oral reading, we have Sofia Mendes. Thank you. Next up, we've got Reina Elementary, and in second grade storytelling, Alessandra Garcia. <laughs> second grade music memory, Ale Alexandra Villarreal. <laughs> Third grade music memory, Emilia Rios. In fifth grade science, Christian Gonzalez. Fifth grade listening skills, Gustavo de Leon. Next up, we have uh, Escandón Elementary. First in third grade, storytelling, Haley Hernandez. Third grade, Chess, Leila Ibarra. And in fifth grade, Chess, Emanuel Ramirez. Escandón Elementary. Thank you, Escandona Elementary. Next up, we have uh, Padres Elementary in fourth grade, district champ, listening skills, Maximiano Acevedo. Padres Elementary. Thank you, Padre. Next up, we have JFK Elementary, second grade district champ in creative writing, Alia Torres. Second grade oral reading, 
Alina Acosta. Fifth grade ray writing, oh, I'm sorry, third grade mathematics, Derek Espinosa Moreno. Fifth grade ray writing, Renata Villarreal. JFK Elementary. Good job, JFK Elementary. Next, we have Leo Elementary. In second grade Spanish poetry, Isabella Garcia. Second grade music memory, Valentina Garcia. Third grade Spanish poetry, Melanie Garza. Fourth grade music memory, Valente Flores. Leo Elementary. Thank you, Leo Elementary. Next up, we have Sanford Ice Elementary in second grade, Number Sense District Champ, Eileen Montelongo. Third grade dictionary skills, Alina Garza. Third grade mathematics, Ariana Kiros. Third grade mathematics, Rocio Hernandez. Fourth grade number sense, Giselle Zarate. And fifth grade number sense, Nathan Montelongo. Thank you, Sanford Ice Elementary. And last but certainly not least, our back-to-back -back district champs from Tabasco Elementary. Uh, first up, we've got third grade oral reading, Emilia Saldana. Third grade number six, Hector Coronado. Fourth grade number six, Edwin Gonzalez. And four-time district champ in fourth grade calculator, fourth grade dictionary skills, fourth grade mathematics, fourth grade ready writing, Jovan Gonzalez. <laughs> and in fourth grade oral reading, Camila Brandley. <laughs> With the students tonight are your principal and, self and proud coaches. Once again, congratulations, back-to-back -back district champs, Tabasco Elementary. <laughs> Congratulations to all of the students, all of the staff for receiving such great awards tonight. 
Thank you to all of the parents for their support. Thank you for all the teachers, the directors, the sponsors for ensuring that our students shine bright and thrive uh, to excel. And again, once again, congratulations, Board President. This concludes our recognitions for tonight. Thank you, Blanca. Ladies and gentlemen, again, let me, let's congratulate all of those that were recognized today, not only the, the children and the students of La Jolla, but also the teachers, the sponsors, and the parents. Let's congratulate them one more time. Thank you. Next on the agenda is public comment. Let me please remind everyone that those that are speaking today only have three minutes. So I will ask our timekeeper, my vice president, Nita, to, that will be keeping time. Once time is up, she will inform you. And then, of course, I'll ask my secretary, Ms. Pena, to go ahead and call out the names. So we'll be asking for the first one, Ms. Pena. Yes, today we have a total of three spe speakers. We'll first have um, Robert Sanchez. Please come up to the podium. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Sanchez, and uh, I have repeatedly tried to contact uh, superintendent. Uh, some situations going on with uh, the district and me. I was hired back in September for special education. I'm a fully certified teacher. Um, I came in, filled out all the, paper, the paperwork. After that, I was told to wait, brought into a room, and then released for whatever reason. Uh, the executive director of HR told me uh, she, that I knew why I was being released, and that was it. And so this was a direct retaliation. After that, she told me she was gonna shred my paperwork. Uh, I believe those are official school documents, and uh, I requested, uh, I put a request in for my file. Uh, since then, I have not received anything. I received a letter from the Office of, a, of the Attorney General. You know, um, The council told me that we'd be going over the grievances uh, next school board meeting, so I won't go into detail. Um, besides uh, the file not being released, um, I have no idea what's in there. Uh, for the past 12 years, I have not been able to gain employment with another school district, and I believe it's because what's in that file. And I believe it's false. It's false information. It's uh, something that's been construed to put me in a bad light. So I, I need a, I need that file, and I need to see and then to respond to it. Um, like I said, I've called, I've emailed, I probably emailed some of you. Uh, I email everyone when I email people, uh, just so everyone knows what's going on. And um, that's part of it, right there. What I wanted to say. And uh, just, uh, you know, I don't, this un I think I've been treated unfairly. Um, I've been uh, in the past harassed, worked in a hostile work environment. This is new. I came back to teach um, and, uh, you know, I had to put up with the same thing again. And uh, the reason she said was because something 12 years back that that I said it was false, that I went as far as saying it was a lie. And, um, you know, that's why I'm here. And I know we're going to hear it or we're going to go over it next time or next meeting. And I just wanted to be sure that we're going to do that and that uh, we don't sweep it under the rug or anything like that or get rid of it. And uh, I will be talking to the council concerning my file. I already put that request in. Like I said, I have the information from the Office of the Attorney General, and uh, that, that the, the legal counsel, whichever one it was, was not in compliance. So I have to go through the through all the necessary uh, legwork of- Sir, your three fighting. minutes have expired. Thank you. Okay. Thank Just you. Just so I'll be heard. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Ms. Peña, our next speaker. We have Noe Garza, Jr. Please make your way to the podium. Good 
Good evening, Board President. Before I start, I have a little request. Board President, due to this room being empty, only three comment, three public speakers being here, I kindly and respectfully, for the sake of transparency and to be able to get my full message across, I respectfully request an additional three minutes. If for whatever reason I go over six, I would respectfully, I would walk, I would calmly walk, yield my time. Unfortunately, we're going to go ahead and stick with the three minutes, sir. Thank you. Uh, board member, uh, Dr. Sarsen, welcome to our community. My name is Noe Garza. I'm the Dowell County GOP Chairman for the City of Pinitas. I'm an advocate for, for this school district. My children are in this school district. This is my alma mater. I want to address the board policy that you guys are going to make a decision later on tonight about administrators possibly either picking between politics or, pe or, picking, or picking their job. I started uh, exposing public corruption six years ago because I hate it. I saw it in the dis district. A few months ago, I was before I was before this board and I addressed the corruption that was happening here for years. And you guys were placed in that position. It's like when you go to jail, they make, the judge makes a example of you. So no, future generations don't make it. So you guys are there to do your job. And I thank you for doing your job and going above and beyond. Ms. Sarsen, you're doing an excellent job. Whatever is in Facebook and all people talking rumors, let that be. You continue doing the hard decisions. I ask all of you to make the decisions with your head, not with your heart, because if you make those decisions with your heart, what's gonna happen later? These elected officials are gonna say, you know what? Well, I lost my job, but I'll become a director. And then it's the same vicious cycle. And I address, I work with a lot of good administrators, Mr. Pepe, he's a board member, he was my principal, nothing against it. What I'm trying to say is it is the best decision because it's the best decision, not for their families, I know we all have to do a livelihood, but I worked for this district and I lost my job because of corruption. But I made the decision that I was not gonna turn the blind side. So if they're turning the blind side, they need to go. They need to pick. This is also considered public service. Leave your position. I go back to the chief. I, when he became chief, I addressed him to enforce a court order. Just because he, ha and I don't agree with the man that was here, that not to disrespect him, but Ms. Sarson, you've been doing great. Thank you for releasing that public information and sending me a certified pin drive. I addressed them and I, to enforce a court order. Just because you have a recommendation letter from the district attorney does not mean you are the best qualified person. I have a master's degree in criminal justice and I'm about to graduate as a nurse and I teach part-time for a living. So if you're gonna wear that suit and tie, you better walk the walk and talk the talk. Be out there with your guys. Ms. Stephanie, she was an academy graduate we top of the class, vice president, follow with leadership and with example. Not just because you hold that position and you hold an elected position, we're gonna be cross-sharing attorneys and cross-sharing board members. Think with your head, not with your heart. And you guys are doing an awesome job. And hopefully, one day when you guys is decide to replace it with boards, you all run or, or whatever you decide, but if you don't, I thank you for your service and keep doing the right thing. You know, I'm not to talk about bad about any other board members because a lot of them are friends and family, but they can't make those decisions because they don't have majority. And we rule with government, with government. Thank you, Mr. Garza, but your three minutes you. have expired. Thank you, Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pena. We have Ms. Brenda Lee Salinas. Please make your way to the podium. Good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Sorensen, trustees, and La Jolla FT members and esteemed community members of the community. La Jolla FT did not oppose a TA takeover due to the damage caused by former elected officials and administrators who misused public school funds meant for the classroom and teachers and staff raises that did not happen due to the deficit they created. La Jolla FT does not have the authority to override any local and legal policies. However, we are committed to ensuring district campus and department leaders to adhere to these policies to create a positive work environment for all our members. And it's important to note that these same local and legal policies 
apply to all school employees, including our members. La Jolla FT has not and will not bow down to any, fa to any favors or for any favors. We respect others and value honesty, transparency, and unity. We express our gratitude to those who listen to and address our members' long overdue concerns and issues. La Jolla FT family and Dr. Sorensen have found or formed a positive collaboration and partnership to work towards a better future for our students. Our joint commitment is towards creating a work environment that is free from hostility and supports all our teachers and staff who work with our children on a daily basis. We understand that these needs of our students and are dedicated to fulfilling children on a daily basis. We understand that, I'm sorry, we understand that the needs of our students and, and are dedica dedicated to fulfilling them. I apologize for that. This unity is a testament of our shared responsibility and commitment to all the students. So Dr. Sorensen and esteemed school board members, once again, thank you and thank you for all that you do. We trust that you will make the right choices to stop all the injustices in our district and continue to focus on the educational welfare of all our students in our district. May everyone have a blessed evening. And lastly, I do wanna say that the art exhibit is amazing. I gaze with all at all the art pieces. So I know that they, um, it's over at 7.30. So please ask you know, the community to come and join because we need to make sure that our students' talents and skills do not go unnoticed. So congratulations to Dr. Samora Jr. and to the art teachers and all our students with uh, this beautiful talent that they have and the beautiful pieces that are out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Secretary Pena, do we have any others? That concludes our public comments. Okay, Vice President Chavez, thank you very much for taking time. The following item is agenda item number six, superintendent's report, Dr. Sorensen. Thank you, President Alvarez um, and trustees. Um, I would like to um, present not only to the board, but to our community. And when I say community, that means our community at large um, about the system of great schools and its relationship to a action item that I have presented this evening, um, which is, um, will be voted on later. So if we could accelerate to the next slide, that would be great. So I am um, thankful to the board that we have um, entered into a partnership called the System of Great Schools. But I think it's important to put the System of Great Schools into context and how it is a part of a strategic plan that we will move forward with um, looking forward to 24, 25 and beyond and how to strategically align our system, our schools, our instruction to lead to improved student outcomes. So I think it's important to pause and just go through, so what is the system of great schools? So first and foremost, it is a district-wide problem-solving approach with the goal of creating the schools that families want and need. The system of great schools uses unique current state analysis to align school and district options within these needs. SGS districts are provided with above and beyond supports to align their systems, mission, vision, and goals, and gives us a laser focus on student outcomes. So as we join the system of great schools, it is our intent to study ourselves, in essence, how good our schools are performing, where we do not have quality seats, where programs may be replicated and duplicated, and where we are authentically living up to or not living up to our promise to families. Next slide. So let's start with the why. And this is something I am so proud to say that in visiting, again, almost every school, 
Um, I have two left, just two, um, but star started, and so I didn't want to interrupt testing. Um, but it's, it's our common North Star, which is every student deserves a high quality best fit school and a high quality best fit program. And so entering into this partnership in this um, system of great schools, districts should align their resources with student needs, period. And districts should deliver school models that reflect the needs and wants of their community. We should enter into programs, partnerships that reflect the needs and wants of the community. And then the district aligns that with the student needs, outcomes, and goals. And so we will be conducting, as part of our membership in the system of great schools, deep dive analysis on all of our schools, all of our seats, all of our programs based upon a common set of data points. Next slide. So an example, this is not, I want to say this over and over again, this is not our example, but I wanted to just use one as a tangible example that um, we can consume as a community. So let's pretend, let's imagine that by June 2026, 90% of students will be served in AB schools, right? 90% of students in this district. Now that's an ambitious target, right? It is one that will be set by the board based upon input from the community, driven by data. So then as a result of said North Star goal, whatever it is that we set together, we come up with some non-negotiables. And what an example of a non-negotiable is that the superintendent must take bold action if a school is labeled D or F for three consecutive years. So there is bold action to be taken. That means there will be change. That means there will be options. But again, this will be based upon a deep analysis of data. It will be based on community input and it will be based on engagement with stakeholders. So for that's an example, right? Again, we haven't set a North Star goal because we have to do a deeper dive into the data and come to consensus on what our North Star goal would be. Next slide. So the system of great schools analyze their current state and annually plan strategies to get closer to that North Star goal. And so again, without reading this entire slide to the community or to the board, what you'll see is a continuous improvement cycle, right? And as a district, we should be continuously improving. And part of that starts with the analysis. And we should continually be analyzing what is our need, what is the community demand, and what does the data say? And based upon that cycle, we will plan school actions, plan for improvement, align resources, align funding, align positions, and execute and manage performance. And that's our role and responsibility as a district, first and foremost, to again, deliver on the promise of quality seats, quality schools, for every child in this district. So again, this is an example. This is an example. So, so what? So what do we do now? What, what, what could be potential pathways? We've got a third year F campus. Close and reassign. It could be a district run ACE restart. Right? Those are samples. We could enter into an external partnership. We could phase in new models, PTEC, partnership agreements, um, again, redesign. Right now, I'll use an example, and this comes from my visits in, in many, many, many schools. We have schools that are labeled STEM and fine arts and STEAM. I don't see evidence of that currently as I take my visits. And so we have to be honest with the public about is this truly a fine arts school? Is this truly a STEM school? If that's what we're calling it, and there's a sign outside, how does the instruction and resources actually show up if that's what we're saying school X is? So again, we've got to truly do an analysis, not only based upon data, but based upon the wants and needs of the community, and accountability ratings is a part of it, to really then evaluate results, 
and call the right play to make sure that every school in our district is a thriving campus. So it's got a very problem-centered approach, problem-solving approach. We identify what is the problem that we're trying to solve, whether it be for school X, school Y, school Z, school A, B, or C. And we seek to understand not only what is the performance issue, but what are the community needs and demands. And then we empower our families, we as a district, as a board, as leadership, create sustainable and effective central, central office structures and campus structures that drive collaboration and support for our campuses, with then the outcome and the goal being that every child will have access to a high quality best fit school. And that's what we seek to achieve, to serve our families and our students better each and every day as we're here to improve the outcomes for the students and families that we serve. So just so everybody sees, System of Great School Districts across Texas, there are currently 22 active SGS districts, over 720,000 students served, um, and you can see the outcomes um, present on the slide. But nine of the districts have doubled the number of A and B campuses, greater percentage increase in A and B campuses than the state. And so you can see they're all over the state and systems are working on improving their outcomes um, throughout the state of Texas. And so as a part of this partnership, we get support. And I wanted to read just kind of the high level um, outlines here and I bolded them. We get an executive level um, I have, I'm sorry, my bad. Um, I have to appoint a dedicated executive level position that reports directly to the superintendent. So in some districts, what you will see is they have a chief innovation officer. You will not see that here in La Jolla. I will not have just a, a lone chief innovation officer. This will be led by my chief of staff. So this work will be something that the chief of staff works on as part of the strategic plan for the district. We will also do an analysis to ensure that we have quality seats in every school. And where we don't, we have to create plans, strategic priorities, strategic initiatives to address it and to address the North Star goal and our envisioned student experience. Finally, we will have to have a board approved SGS aligned theory of action and North Star goal we will develop annual plans, and then we will develop performance management structures and routines for strategic priorities, strategic actions, strategic priorities that we will be measuring, that we will be transparent about, and that we will share with the community as we move forward at each step of this SGS process. I want to say that I have gotten quite a bit of feedback about the 1882 partnerships that were entered into. Um, and I am not convinced currently that there was a deep level of community engagement and community input. And so I will be recommending later to the board that we rescind our contracts as a part of the 1882 agreement and then rather engage in this level of analysis so that we are making collaborative decisions with the community, collaborative decisions with leadership, and truly do an analysis of our data and where we need to be in order to achieve exactly what I keep saying, quality seats, quality schools for every child. So again, this is just a visual so that everyone can see how we establish mission, vision, student experience. What do we want every child to achieve? here in La Jolla, and how does that differ from school to school if, if we decide that schools are program driven, if we decide, decide that schools are driven by a particular theme, right? But we know that again, the outcome is annual quality seats, we will then set strategic priorities, and then there will be initiatives to support those priorities. So these are the supports that we receive as a part of this partnership. We get an executive advisor, we get TEA supports, 
including access to high quality best fit schools, if that is what we choose to do, executive coaching for senior district leaders. We get specific leadership coaching. I want to say that again, because I have been very transparent with my principals that coaching doesn't reflect deficiency. We all need a good coach. We all need somebody who helps us grow and get better. And so leadership coaching is a part of this process that we will lean into as leaders. We have exemplar visits of schools all over the state that are doing this work and doing this work with kids that look just like ours and have demographics just like ours. We are part of a cohort of schools, districts that enter into this partnership, and there's planning and performance management supports. So again, you know, this isn't a Dr. Marcy Sorensen initiatives and she's, you know, doing this. We will have not only support, but expert coaching as we go along this process, as well as professional learning. This also includes professional learning for board members. I wanna hold that up, that board members will continue to also receive professional learning um, and attend conferences to learn about this. So again, as they govern, um, they are governing from a position of informed um, information, informed information that's you know dual, but they themselves are learning with me, with the team in professional learning. It is not just me bringing it back to board members. Um, and so there's an opportunity for board members to lead large parts of this um, engagement. So I um, tried to summarize it um, briefly. There's a lot under each of those pillars and hoods, and there's a lot of work to do. Um, and I'm actually very excited to do this work because I think it, it allows us to actually stand up and look at the community and say, we want you to engage with us as we decide to move forward on what we need to, in, what we need to do collectively to ensure that there are, again, quality seats, quality schools for every kid, quality seats, quality schools for every kid. I'm gonna keep saying that. Um, but it requires partnership. And it requires deep partnership with school leaders. It requires deep partnership with parents, deep partnership with community. And that is why I will be recommending to the, to the board this evening to um, rescind the contracts for the 1882 partnerships that were engaged in because based upon the feedback that I've gotten thus far, um, I'm not certain that that happened. And so I can't currently answer the questions why, why those campuses? And so um, without, as a new superintendent, myself having those answers to provide, um, I cannot make a recommendation that we move forward with school action. So um, later the board will have an opportunity to vote, but if there are any questions from board members, I'm happy to take it at this time. Thank you, Dr. Sorensen. Do any of the board members have any questions for Dr. Sorensen? Dr. Sorensen, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So from what you're saying, how you're describing this um, SGS, so it's about an, an, analyzing data to see kind of where we need to improve but fundamentally. So that data that would re be required of this program is that data we already have readily available and we can give if we become a part of this? Is that data we still need to kind of scrounge up and, and work with? And That's a great question. Um, so I think it's a both and. You'll hear me say both and a lot. Um, so I think that it's a lot of data points that we already have, right? It's just not succinctly in one place. So we'll have some work here to do locally um, to get our data in a space and place where we can analyze it at scale. Um, but I will tell you that the folks here who are working on data, really bright, really hardworking, and doing the very best um, with what's been asked of them thus far. Um, and some of it will come from strategic actions that we take moving forward around community input, right? We will hear from community. That's qualitative data that we will be gathering along the way. And the state will also, as a part of this partnership, give us data reports on how we've been doing longitudinally. So it isn't a full lift on data collection from us. So it is a both and. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Vice President Chavez. Do any of the other board members have any questions for Dr. Chavez regarding the report she gave? 
Seeing that there is none, let's move on. We will now move to the next agenda item, consideration of employee level three grievance appeals. Because these hearings concern personal issues, the hearings will be conducted in closed session in accordance with Governor Texas Government Code Section 551.074, 551.082, and 551.071. The board will now go into closed session in accordance with Section 551.074, 551.082, 551.071, 551.072, 551.073, 551.071 of the Texas Government Code to hear a complaint made employees pursuant to a governance under board policy DGBA local. The time is now 729. At the conclusion of the hearing, ladies and gentlemen, we will return to the open session to take appropriate action regarding the hearing.
We will now reconvene and resume the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. The time is 11.32 p.m. We will now take action on the grievance hearing we heard in closed session. Do I hear a motion for the level three grievance filed by Lloyd Loya? I move that we, or I motion, that we move to determine that we have stopped, looked, and listened, and that we take no further action on this matter. Do we have a second? I second that motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Do I hear a motion for grievance level number three, followed by Jose Luis Verial Jr.? I move that we uh, determine that we have stopped, looked, and listened, and that we take no further action on this matter. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Seeing that there's none, motion passes. Do I hear a motion for the level three grievance filed by Jose, correction, Claudia Davila? I move that we determine that we have stopped, looked, and listened, and that we take no further action on this matter. Do we have a second? I second the motion. All in favor is signified by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Seeing that there's none, motion passes. Do I hear a motion for the level three grievance filed by uh, Mr. Mendoza? I move that we determine that we have stopped, looked, and listened, and that we take no further action on this matter. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you, Celso. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Seeing that there's none, motion passes. Do I hear a motion for the level three grievance filed by Joaquin Garcia? I move that we determine that we have stopped, looked, and listened, and that we take no further action at this time. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Seeing that there's none, motion passes. Do I hear a motion for the level of grievance filed by Hilda Leticia Rosales? I move that we have determined that we stopped, looked, listened, and that we take no further action in this matter. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Seeing that there is none, motion passes. That covers all six of those that we heard. Next on the agenda is our consent agenda. Do I have a motion? For item number nine. Consented then. Thank you, doctor. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor of the consent motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Next item under the is action and discussion items. Discussion and approval to decline to employ or accept volunteer chaplains to perform the duties of school counselors as per Senate Bill 736. I'm asking uh, this presentation to be done by Erica Gonzalez. Good evening, Mr. Board President, Madam Superintendent, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, before you is the item uh, to approve to decline to employ or accept volunteer chaplains to perform the duties of school counselors as per Senate Bill 763. Uh, this allowance was to allow school districts to be able to provide additional wraparound supports, uh, social emotional supports uh, to students. Now, as the district, we have uh, proposed that we do not uh, do this due to the uh, wraparound support services that we do have in our district. Uh, currently, our district employs over 67, 67 licensed school counselors, three licensed professional counselors, and three behavior strategists that allow for a wraparound uh, support for mental health services to meet the needs of our students. Therefore, at this time, our recommendation to the board is to decline to employer accept volunteer chaplains uh, to perform the duties of school counselors as per Senate Bill 763. Thank you. Do we have any questions? If not, do I have a motion? I move to approve item number one. Do I have a second? I second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Seeing that there's not, motion carries. 
Item number two, consider termination agreement with Region 1 Educational Service Center for the operation of Rosendo Benavides Elementary, Leo J. Leo Elementary, Karina Pena Elementary, Juan Seguin Elementary, and College and Career Schools, as well as related charters presented by Dr. Marcy Sorensen. I would ask the board, based upon my previous presentation around the system of great schools, um, to approve this recommendation. Do I have a motion? I move to approve this item. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> item number three, consider adoption of board policy B and D local, presented by Dr. Marcy Sorensen. I ask that the board approve this um, re request. Do we have any questions, Dr. Sorensen? If not, do I have a motion? I move to approve uh, item number three, adoption of board policy, DDD, local. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, consider adoption of board policy, DFBB, local, presented by Dr. Marcy Sorensen. I request that the board approve the recommendation of the administration to consider the adoption of board policy, DFBB, local. Do you have any questions for Dr. Sorensen? If not, do I have a motion? A motion that we adopt board policy DFBB. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Seeing <coughs> that there's not unanimous vote to approve. Number five, consider and approve employment areas for program change presented by Dr. Marcy Sorensen. I would ask the board approve. Um, the employment areas for program change as outlined by the item submitted by the administration. Okay. Okay. Do we have any questions for Dr. Sorensen regarding this particular issue or item? No. Okay. If not, do I have a motion? I move to approve, consider the approve employment areas for program change. Do I have a second from the board? A second the motion. Do I have any discussion? Seeing that there's none, all in favor of uh, item number five, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Seeing that there's none, motion carries. Item number 11 on the agenda is to cover items A through D. Uh, go through each item, which would be, A would be April 24, 2024, regular board meeting. E would be April, correction, May 9, 2024, regular board meeting. C would be May 25th, 2024, La Jolla ISD commencement exercises, Burt Ogden Arena, Edinburgh, Texas. May 29, 2024, regular board meeting. School board members and superintendent remarks. Dr. Sorensen? I do not have any remarks at this time. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a comment that I have remarks that I'd like to make at this time. Public service is fundamental, fundamental to our democracy. And La Jolla ISD, independent school districts, appreciates those who represent and lead our community by holding elected office. These positions require time, effort, and energy to appropriately meet the high standards expected of elected officials and entail responsibilities that functionally overlap with the roles and responsibilities of administrative positions in La Jolla ISD to ensure that all district administrative staff can support Laredo I, correction, La Jolla ISD, Laredo, uh, La Jolla, La Jolla's ISD's dedication to prioritizing student needs. The La Jolla ISD school board has approved a revision to board policy DVD local that prohibits any district employees with the following responsibilities from holding elected office and concurrently maintaining employment with the district. Employee evaluations, employee, employment decisions, supervisory responsibilities of the La Jolla ISD, employees, contract oversight, judiciary risk oversight, administrative or public funds. This policy does not apply to classroom teachers and other campus level or central office based support staff. Current employees subject to this policy who wish to maintain their elected positions will be able to remain employed with the La Jolla ISD until the conclusion of their employment contract. 
This policy decision speaks to the district's commitment to creating the conditions necessary for all students in La Jolla ISD to succeed. Thank you. We are in uh, item number 13, if I'm not mistaken. With that said, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move that we adjourn. Do I have a second? I second the motion. So with that said, it is 11.43. All opposed? I mean, all in favor of adjourning? I mean, not that I really need it, but aye. 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 all opposed? A long night. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone have a safe evening. <clears throat>